Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. Yeah. In this video we're going to talk about one of the best known chairs in Sweden. The Lamino, designed by Yngve Ekström back in 1956. And since then, more than a quarter of a million Lamino shares uh, have been produced in the factory in Vaggeryd. And in 1999, it was voted the Swedish share of the century by the readers of the interior magazine Sköna Hem. And today we will tell you the story behind this classic share and show you its predecessors as well as some followers. Yeah. Yngve Ekström was born in 1913 in the small town of Hagafors in the south of Sweden. In Hagafors, Sweden's first furniture factory was started already in 1863, <laughs> producing classic wooden dowel chairs. This is the heart of Sweden's furniture district and during the late part of the 19th century a huge lot of furniture manufacturers emerged, employing a lot of people previously working as farmers. One of them was Oskar Ekström who built a home for himself and his wife Sigrid only a few steps away from the factory. The young couple uh, soon got two sons, the first Jerker in 1911 and then Yngve two years later in 1913. After only a few years, the family moved to the close by town, town. Yeah, well, it's more a small, uh, <laughs> small town. Yeah, a very small town of Vaggerid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the place where the Lamino chair would later be born. Yeah. After only four years in the new home, Oscar died from tuberculosis and mm. suddenly Sigrid was left alone to raise the two young boys. Jerker soon started working as a carpenter at the local wooden box factory. And at the young age of 13, Yngve also started working. That's very young. Yeah. 13. But child. Yeah, child that, that work. is a child. <laughs> <laughs> His first employer was a sawmill, but after only a couple years, he was hired at a pedestal manufacturer producing wooden furniture. He had no academical education, of course not, he was only 13, mm -hmm. but took some distance courses studying drawing. During the 30s, Yngwie spent much of his spare time reading books about furniture history and he was a subscriber of the interior magazine Forum. At the same time, he also engaged himself in the local church. His brother, on the other hand, became a member of the Communist Party. <laughs> yeah, they were quite different, I think. Mm. <laughs> in 1933, Yngwie suffered a severe depression and was hospitalized for some time. And luckily he came over it and could return home after a couple of weeks, but depressions would follow him for the rest of his life. Manic periods of hard work were always followed by darkness and anxiety. A couple of years ago we spoke to a carpenter who had worked with Yngwie back in the days, and according to him it was uh, probably the manic episodes that made Yngwie such a great uh, furniture designer. Mm. Uh, it must have been hard for Yngwie himself, but his mental problems was in a way uh, also a gift for a man who uh, dedicated his life to design innovative furniture. Yeah. In 1945, the two Ekström brothers started the company Ese Möbler together with a former colleague Bertil Sjöqvist. The name was an initialism for Ekström Sjöqvist Ekström. The three men had very little experience selling modern furniture, and worse, they had no money. <laughs> <laughs> At first, Yngwie and Jerker had some hard time collaborating. Jerker was thoughtful and somewhat anxious. Yngwie was impatient and sensitive. But no matter what, the communist and the Christian found a way to collaborate. And their two personalities turned out to be a winning concept for the company. Yngwie once said, we are very different and therefore we complement each other. And that's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. He was indeed right, and the company still exists today. Uh, nowadays, given the somewhat more international name, Svedese. Yeah. <laughs> Swedese. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and in the beginning, uh, Ese Möbler was something of an experimental workshop. Uh, Yngve designed furniture, then produced by Jerker and Sjöqvist, in a small, quite primitive workshop. Uh, the quantities were low, um, and to make a living, Yngwie also worked as a woodcarver, producing traditional furniture. Um, already in 1945, uh, the first two modern chairs were developed. 
the high back Anders and the low back Per. And they were named after the two sons of a good friend of Yngve. And they are often considered to be the embryo of the Lamino share, and they really are. Uh, it's interesting to note that already at this early stage, Yngve decided to produce a high-back version and a low-back version, and this is something he would do for the rest of his career. Anders and the pair are at the same time uh, modern and traditional shares. The webbing uh, was certainly inspired by modernists like Bruno Mattsson, Alvar Aalto and Axel Larsson. Uh, but the frame was more of a traditional wooden dowel chair, much like the ones produced at Hagafors Stolfabrik. Uh, they were never a commercial success, and producing them uh, was expensive, and the distributor was just a small uh, store in the close by town of Jönköping. And soon the store replaced Anders and Per with highly modern tubular steel furniture. Hmm. And then another hard blow for ESA Möbler was that the shares were copied by competitors who produced them for a lower price. Hmm. And this affected the two brothers. Jerker was hospitalized, uh, suffering from uh, bleeding uh, gastric ulcer. And Yngve got depressed, worrying for his brother as hmm. well as for the finances. Hard times. Yeah. Luckily, in 1952, Yngve came in contact with Lena Larsson, who was responsible for the interior department at Nordiska Kompaniet in Stockholm. She was highly impressed by the knockdown chair Tema, and ESA Möbler was back on its feet. Mm. The following years, in the early 50s, the resting chair Kurva Curve was mm. developed. Yngve was highly impressed by the Swedish colleague Bruno Mattsson, as well as the molded plywood furniture designed by the Eameses in the U.S., The first experimentation were made using clamps, but in 1953 they afforded buying a hydraulic table. Oh. That's fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Using this, the first curva frames were produced. As with the chair Anders, a low-back version was produced named Båge, or Bow. Yeah. Ish. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> And... Curva isn't really a single chair, a rather a concept developed for several years. And the early shares were more straight, but in the mid-50s they started to look more and more like the Lamino chair. And a significant difference is the shape of the backrest. At first it was as, as wide in the top as in the bottom, but soon uh, the top got much narrower. Different type of upholstery were offered, in, like jute webbing and cane. Jute, I think it is in English too. It's uh, jute know. in uh, Swedish, but yeah, <laughs> I hope you understand what we mean. <laughs> Without doubt, Kurva was the great breakthrough for ESA Möbler. In 1945, the turnover was just 4,800 US dollars. Uh, but in 1955, this has had increased to $85,000. So it's a quite uh, yeah, huge increase yeah, yeah. for those years. And during the experimentation with Curva, the technique uh, was elaborated and the shares got more durable. And another innovation uh, during this time was the small metal fitting ma made from brass holding the shares together. And this made it possible to sell the shares as knockdown furniture, possible for the customer to assemble using only a hex key. And this uh, made production as well as shipping much cheaper. And the concept was soon copied by IKEA. Mm. Ingvar Kamprad actually asked Jerker if he could borrow the idea. And Jerker said, well, okay, that's, that's fine, borrow it. And that was probably a bad idea because IKEA never paid the Ekstroms any royalties for this uh, innov innovation. Mm, 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 mm. And finally, at the 1956 Swedish Furniture Fair, the new chair Lamino was exhibited for the first time. It was, a, it was a development of Kurva with somewhat different dimensions and more elaborated frame. was an immediate success and has been in production ever since. Yeah. Since 56? Yeah. Wow. 
Today, more than a quarter of a million Lamino chairs has been produced in Vagrid. Yngve Ekström continued to design chairs for decades after this, but he never again managed to create something as popular and complete as the mm. Lamino chair. In a way, he peaked his career at the age of 43. Yeah. But he wasn't too troubled about this. Uh, later, he said, designing one good chair is probably not a bad life's work. No, that's... And it isn't. No, it's true. It's great. But Yngve did design several uh, followers to Lamino. And I think we should take a look at some of them now. Okay. And this was the history of the Lamino chair, and I hope you found it interesting. Yeah, and please click thumbs up and subscribe if yeah. you haven't already. And follow us on Instagram, we're called Scandinavian Design 101. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Thank you.